if, if we didn't solve these problems in a very short period of time, uh, we would die. Uh, and it was extremely difficult to solve them. How close to death did you come? We were yeah, within single-digit weeks. 22 hours a day? Or like what, how many yeah, hours? I was working, yeah, so seven days a week, sleeping in the factory. I uh, worked every day from the, I worked from the, from the paint shop, general assembly, body shop. You ever worry about yourself imploding? Like, it's just yeah, too yeah. much? Yeah, absolutely. No one should put this many hours into work. This is not good. People should not work this hard. I'm not, they should not do this. This is too, it's very painful. Painful in what sense? It's, it, hurts my, it hurts my brain. When you think of the innovative world of cars and car technology, Tesla as a company quickly comes to mind. As one of the 21st century's biggest success stories, Tesla continues to break the limitation of what was thought possible with car technologies. And now, with a market value of over $1 trillion, it is clearly breaking financial ceilings too, becoming one of the highest valued companies on the face of the earth. When this image of Tesla is presented, your mind likely races to the picture of one man, the charismatic South African billionaire, Elon Musk, who has been hailed as the real life version of Tony Stark. As the CEO of Tesla, he has become synonymous with people's minds as the founder of the company, but nothing could be farther from the truth. Tesla was founded by Martin Eberhardt and Mark Tarpenning, with Musk only joining the boat almost five years later. Now these two founders have seemingly vanished off the face of the earth with little to no mention of them around the Tesla fields. Why did they leave? Why have they been quiet all this time? And what ventures have they been up to? We'll answer this question and more today as we take a deep dive into the subject of what happened to Tesla's founders. Born May 15th, 1960 in Berkeley, California in the United States of America, Martin Eberhard was a brilliant child. Eberhard grew up in the California culture and later went on to study at the University of Illinois. It was there that he earned a bachelor's degree in computer engineering in 1982, furthering his love for the digital space. He continued at the same institution where he later earned a master's degree in electrical engineering two years later in 1984. He would go on to begin an illustrious career as an electrical engineer at YC Technology where he worked for several years. It was his time at Wise Technologies that would later prove to give him an invaluable asset for life as it was here that he met his future business partner, Mark Tarpenning. Mark Tarpenning was born on the 1st of June, 1964 in Sacramento, California, in the United States of America. Tarpenning grew up in California and he obtained his bachelor's degree in computer science from the University of California in 1985. He began his career working for the conglomerate Textron in Saudi Arabia, and he would go on to develop software and firmware products for several companies, including Seagate Technology and Bechtel. Tarpenning met Eberhard when he came to visit Wise Technologies, where Eberhard worked. The two quickly became close, and many an idea was shared between them, as they often got together for dinner parties or to play Magic the Gathering. From here, they started doing consulting work together and eventually in 1997, they went on to start a business, Nouveau Media, a company developing ebook readers that produced the Rocket ebook. This was the very first e-reader and was co-funded by Barnes & Noble. Three years later, the two sold the company to Gemstar TV Guide for a whopping $187 million. For his next project, Eberhard wanted to create a car manufacturer that is also a technology company. He had an interest in sports cars, but being somewhat of an environmentalist, he wanted to avoid the dependency on all oil imports, and so he sought to develop an electric car prototype. The popular rumor is that all this drive spurred from a recent divorce he had just had in 2000, and at this time he was going through a midlife crisis. However true or false that that may be, the world would soon thank him for his creativity. With creative juices pumping, Eberhard partnered once again with Tarpenning to launch Tesla Motors in July 1st, 2003. Their goal was to make an electric sports car without compromise, a car that would rival and beat the conventional gas guzzlers that were on the market. However, starting a company from the ground up was a task that from the onset they knew would be hard. To alleviate some of this burden, they found partners in AC Propulsion, 
a company that had the motor technology they would need, and Lotus, a car manufacturer that had the perfect car model they would need for the implementation. Using the platforms from their recently acquired partners, Tesla, under the leadership of Eberhard and Terpenning, went to work on what would be now the new Tesla Roadster. It was at this time that Ian Wright came on board the company. His main responsibility at Tesla was to manage the relationships with the two main partners of the company, Lotus Engineering and AC Propulsion. As the endeavor continued, it took a year for the whole process to become very costly. Having previously been funded out of the pocket with the help of a few investors, the newly founded Tesla needed more capital and fast. It was the desire that led them into the next phase of their company journey. Eberhard and Tarpenning first met Elon Musk at a meeting for Mars Society members. In this time, they connected with Musk deeply through their mutual love of space exploration. Musk had recently earned $100 million when PayPal, which he co-founded, was acquired by eBay for $1.5 billion in stock. At the time of the acquisition, Musk owned 11% of PayPal's shares. Musk, always looking for fresh ideas and fresh pastures, was looking for investments to partake in. In urgent need for money for their business, Eberhard and Tarpenning made their pitch to Musk. In April 2004, Musk invested $6.35 million of Tesla's $6.5 million Series A funding round and became the company's second chairman of the board. In the now famous words, Eberhard said, we're pitching this to someone who's actually trying to make rocket ships. However, while Musk took an active role within the board, he wasn't deeply involved in the day-to-day -day business operations. That part was left to Eberhard and Tarpenning. With Musk on board, Eberhard and Tarpenning began developing their electric powertrain. It involved a lot of trial and error and the start of the battery management systems that today oversee EV batteries and power systems. Eberhard even buried battery cells and forced them into thermal runaway, just to see what would happen. Also, with Musk now on board Tesla, would go on to raise a lot of money in the following years. In February 2006, Musk led Tesla's Series B venture capital funding round of $13 million. Over the next 18 months, Musk raised an additional $93 million across three more rounds of funding. During this period, Tesla also revealed prototypes of its first car to the public. Tesla Motors announced that its innovative, completely electric Tesla Roadster prototype had achieved an unprecedented range of 245 miles of single charge in company tests. Additional tests showed that a $100,000 sports car could accelerate from 0 to 60 in less than 4 seconds and could reach a top speed of 125 miles per hour. All this was attained at efficiency ratings were equivalent to a gasoline mileage of 135 miles per gallon. The vehicle's electric motor was powered by lithium-ion cells often used in laptop computer batteries that could be recharged from a standard electrical outlet. The Roadster would only reach the market two years later, in 2008, but the buzz that had been generated was electrifying the market. Clients were queuing up and investors were throwing money at Tesla. Basically, things were looking pretty promising for the future of Tesla. The only twist was that this future apparently did not include Eberhard or Tarpenning. In August 2007, while Eberhard was giving a presentation to the Motor Press Guild, a Tesla board meeting was being held in his absence. He would later receive a call from Elon Musk letting him know that he was no longer the CEO. Instead, he was given the role President of Technology. It was a dummy position giving Eberhard zero power or control. He was effectively being pushed to leave the company that he had founded and given close to five years of his time and effort. In his own words, there was no discussion, I didn't get to hear what they said, I didn't even get to defend myself. I felt totally stranded. Eberhard was succeeded first by Michael Marks, a Tesla investor who served as a temporary CEO. Eventually, Zayev Drory took over as Eberhard's permanent replacement in November of that same year. Drory is often credited with turning the Roadster from a prototype into a viable product, and under his leadership, he oversaw the successful launch of the Roadster in 2008. In early 2008, with an untenable position and evident hostility towards him, Eberhard felt trapped. Shortly after their company shipped its first automobile, the Roadster No. 1, Eberhard left Tesla. Terpenning, who was Vice President of Electrical Engineering at the time, and had been supervising the development of electronic and software systems for the Roadster, also left the company in 2008. Eberhard claimed that he had been voted off the island in a rather rude way. 
With the original founders gone not long after, in October 2008, Musk took over as CEO of the company and fired 25% of the company's staff. This whole transition period was not an entirely peaceful one. However, Eberhard and Tarpenning alleged that they were forced out of the company that they founded, and in 2009, Eberhard sued Tesla and Musk for issues including libel and slander. He alleged that he had been forced out of the company and that the delays and financial problems associated with the Roadster had been unfairly blamed on his leadership. Of most note was Eberhard's claim that Musk was attempting to rewrite history and taking credit for developing the pioneering electric roadster. In September 2009, an out-of-court settlement was reached. One interesting outcome of the deal was that five men, including Eberhard, Tarpenning, and Musk, could call themselves the co-founders of Tesla. After leaving the company, both Mark Eberhard and Tarpenning went through a quiet phase before resurfacing. Both Eberhard and Tarpenning went on to do consulting work and mentoring. In 2010, Eberhard was working on EVs for Volkswagen in Silicon Valley, and then they founded the battery tech firm in EV it which was bought by a Chinese electric car startup, SF Motors, in 2017. Most recently, the pair invested in BRD Motorcycles, which then changed its name to Alta Motors. The company is the maker of the Redshift, a fully electric motorcycle. Mark and Martin invested in their last round, which raised $4.5 million. Now, in regards to their thoughts about Tesla, both men, who are still Tesla shareholders, think Musk has made some considerable and commendable moves in progressing the company forward. Despite all the commotion and their less than honorable departure from the company, they still wish to see Tesla flourish into the automotive giant they all dreamt it could be, a reality that gets closer day by day. It is without question that Tesla is soaring to the heights that are almost unprecedented for an automotive giant of its age. Whether this would have been possible under the leadership of Eberhard and Tarpenning is something that we may truly never know. Now what we do know, however, is that it would be impossible to have the Tesla we all know and love today had it not been for the vision that started with just two men, Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpenning. However, deep in the shadows of history may push them. They will undoubtedly be the names of some of this century's biggest game changers.